It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So it's been a couple of weeks since I've had some voice issues. Uh, I've recently been to see a specialist and there's kind of a path going forwards. If you've been following the podcast, you will have heard potentially the latest update. And of course, if you're interested, you can always go and check that out. But it does mean I am back on board and recording some new content with this being the first of those episodes. Everything that I've been released right to this point, at least thankfully, uh, except for last week's with the typing sound sample that had a bit of explanation about my voice was pre-recorded stuff. So now that I've seen the specialist, I think I'm in a good position that I can start recording stuff and actually talking in them and we'll kind of go from there. So this episode, this video um, explores, I guess, some of the things that is quite often an asked question in building mechanical keyboards, which is how dangerous is soldering for your health? Now, we know that when we solder, you know, we're dealing with potentially leaded solder, lead compound. Uh, and quite often people talk about, oh no, you know, you're inhaling lead. And I want to say that that's a bit of a strange one because the, the actual vaporization temperature of lead is about 600 degrees Celsius. And for most part, you should only be soldering around 300, 350 to, to get leaded solder to flow. If you're desoldering, you might be running at 400, even 450 if you're really working on something big to get leaded solder to flow. So the smoke that you're seeing is actually most likely going to be your flux, your rosin, not lead. Now, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get lead sputter and lead particulate. It's just not going to be in vapor form wafting around in the air. At least that's how I understand it from my understanding of, of chemistry and physics. Okay, But what about that smoke? What about that rosin? And we know anecdotally from people who do a lot of soldering, they can have irritation. You know, they can suffer breathing issues. You might get chronic symptoms from it. We have people in the community who've done soldering in small confined spaces for extended periods of time, like cable makers who have, you know, talked about problems like that, leading them to needing bigger spaces, better ventilation, uh, fume extractors, and so on and so forth. So today's video is going to be really tackling that from a very basic approach. Okay, now let's switch over to the desktop and have a look at what I've actually got going on to, I guess, look at this topic. So I've got a soldering iron here. This is just the, the really cheap soldering iron. I reviewed the SH-72. I've got some leaded solder over here on the side. I've got a little desktop fan here, just uh, my, my pseudo brass clean tip. And what you'll see here is this little green box is a PM 2.5 detector. Now, for those who have kept up with the news recently at the start of the year, Australia, where I am located, had a lot of bushfires going on and we had smoke in the air constantly for days on end to the point where the sun was turning orange. Now, for those who have been in bushfire prone areas like California um, and some of the other wildfires like, say, in South America, you would be very familiar with that kind of situation. For those who live in very polluted areas with a high amount of smog, you would also be very familiar with that. And you might know about the PM 2.5. For those who don't, PM is basically particulate matter, um, and the size is micron related. Now, a quick look in Wiki indicates that PM 10 is essentially particles that are small enough that you can breathe in that will impact your upper respiratory areas, but they're not fine enough to potentially enter the oxygen trapping uh, components of your lungs, whereas PM 2.5 are. And that's why 2.5 is such an important value to understand because it can cause interference at a much greater impact level than PM 10 particles, so 10 micron or larger. So at the time, I actually bought this, and this is a cheap uh, it's about $30. I bought it from Banggood because, you know, I've cruised Banggood to look for keyboard related things. This is not at all sponsored by Banggood. Bought this out of my own money because it, at the time, was for my own health purposes. It had nothing to do with keyboards. But talking to people in the community, 
afraid of soldering, wondering if they needed ventilation for their soldering setups. I had a gentleman talk to me today who was like, you know what, I don't want to solder around the kids. I'm probably going to do it in the garage or outside because of the fumes. And it made me think I should probably do something to, to check it out and actually see what their concern really might be. I don't normally do this. Uh, as in think about having to go outside and have a lot of ventilation and stuff like that. If you see my videos, you'll know. So this is a very cheap detector uh, and the Aquis ratings in Australia for health is anything less than PM 2.5 of 50 parts per million. Um, so what we can see is a comparison of that because anything over 50 parts per million uh, or micrograms per cubic meter is essentially hazardous and we were getting over 2000 units of PM 2.5 during our bushfires you know um, so this has a screen that displays a bunch of features on it it has a thermometer and a uh, relative humidity sensor over on this side and this blue box is what inputs it intakes air through these four dots because there's a fan that's in suction mode uh, actually, I'm not sure if it goes in this way and out that way or in this way and out the fan. It doesn't matter, but it's got a sensor inside and you can see uh, the text here. It says a 2.5 sensor by Plantower, um, the brand. Very simple. Um, and then it's just powered by USB. So if you're interested in checking one of these out for yourself, getting one, it's quite portable. I don't know how durable it is because it's just acrylic. Maybe if you made a housing for it or something like that. Um, you'll be able to actually see what it might be able to do to check out your environment. So I've got some USB power here. It's just a, a USB micro. We'll plug it in and we'll check our baseline right now without any soldering. So you can see straight away it's kicked in. We're looking at 24 degrees Celsius here in our study. Humidity about 53 degrees PM. 2.5 of about 4 and it's in green, right? So it's saying it's okay. We've got PM 1.0 at 3, which is okay. PM 10 at 4, which is okay, right? So we're, we're relatively healthy. Now, if I raise this up and blow into it, talk into it a bit, you should see that the relative humidity would increase because I'm putting more moisture into that sensor, right? I hope, maybe. So it's just gone up a little bit, 54. Um, I guess, oh, there we go. So it's it's kind of kicked in at 99 because I I was breathing straight into that sensor. Hopefully I haven't saturated and you'll see it's starting to drop down. So it's quite a slow responding sensor, but it should restore back down to about that 50 point where we were before. And you'll see even the PM 2.5 has had a bit of a spike because there's going to be very fine particulates of water mist vapor from talking. And if it's fine enough to pick it up, then, then I'm pretty confident that it's going to deal okay. And it tells me that my AQI at 2.5 is 6, which is what I was talking about before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this a little bit closer towards me because it's going to emulate as if I'm soldering because normally when I solder, I have a bend over what I'm doing, right? So the gap between the soldering iron and my brass sponge where I'm just going to feed some solder into it is going to mimic roughly the distance to my face and where I would be inhaling. So I'm just going to elevate that using my helping hands as, as best as I can. <clears throat> okay. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to uh, get good enough lift that we'll still be able to see it on the camera. trying to do this uh, without dropping it or crunching it. And there we go. Okay. So it's probably a little bit closer than I normally would be, but with the diffusion of particulates in the air, you know, it, it'll give a good indicator. And we're looking at, it's about uh, 22 centimeters off the top of the table to where the actual sensor is, right? So we're looking about, what's that? Uh, 10 inches almost, nine and a bit inches off the table, just to give you an idea of that distance. So let's move my power cable so it's not gonna get burnt by the soldering iron. I'm gonna plug in the iron. I'm gonna run it at 300 because that's what I 
normally do uh, for for soldering and okay so I've got that dial uh, there we go set to 300 and let's plug it in <clears throat> okay so we're going to start to see that heat up and smoke and then I'll put some fresh 6040 rosin core 0.7 millimeter solder on it <clears throat> And we'll feed it and see how bad the 2.5 gets right on top of it with zero interaction. So I'm not going to blow away the fumes. Um, I'm not going to turn on the fan yet, but we'll we'll see how it goes. So I can see it starting to. There we go. There's some smoke coming off that. You can see. Right. So I'm just going to clean that tip off as it's getting up to temperature. Already we're hitting 39, 64, 81, 95. Okay, so uh, we can see that the 2.5 is going, it's going nuts. Like 500, 580. <laughs> All right, so it's starting to come back down again. Now, just by the natural feeding and airflow in the room here, you'll see the vapors are just going everywhere. I'm not, I'm not doing anything to control it. We saw a spike hit 700 odd, right? So we can see it is getting really up there if you don't do anything about it. 540, right? And I'm just, I'm just feeding it straight in at a relatively sort of casual rate to what you might expect when you are soldering a keyboard. Right, so we saw it spike about 500 to 700 is not at all out of the order. There we go, 720, 790, 800, 882, 900. Right, we're getting we're getting into some bushfire season kind of stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to blow across it like I normally do. So when I solder, I actually blow away from me. So. Let's see if it makes much difference at all or not. So that's going to be a no. Uh, did not make any shred of difference. If anything, it might have made it worse because it was swirling the actual fumes around and you can see it hit 1200 at pm 2.5 wow right that's that's quite significant okay so let's just stop with a bit of that to let the the air sort of try and clear a little bit okay so no more no more fresh solder and you'll see the actual count starting to to tick back down but at least we can see it's quite quick we can see that the fumes we can see the particulate is diffusing away quite quickly from our space. We've now come back down to the green, to the safe zone, to the sub 50 area, right? 39, 43, it's still kind of, some of it's around, but it's nowhere near as that thousand mark that we were talking about before. Um, I realize that I'm probably looking a bit funny because my little screen thing is in the corner and I moved my webcam, so I should probably move it back and I'm, I'm more looking straight forward at the camera now instead of it was in the middle of the screen. Anyhow, all right, so we're now sitting in the 30s. It's starting to come down to normal. So I've got a little USB 5 volt fan thing over here, and let's turn that on. Okay, so the fan is going, the fan is blowing. It's blowing right across the middle. Okay, it's going straight across the path from fan side to the other side. And let's check out what happens. Particulates are already dropping, 20s. It's reducing the uh, relative humidity. So let's go start some solder up. You can see there's a lot of turbulence with the fan cutting across the middle there. 900, 1000, 1200, 13, 1500, 1400. Okay, so. <clears throat> Having the fan blowing across it is not really helping a lot right now. Um, if anything, it's doing what I was talking about before. 
it's creating turbulence, it's blowing the particulate around and dispersing it better in the air and it's just going all over. Now of course I've just stopped feeding solder into that and we'll see having the fan blowing it it's actually still sitting around the 400 mark 300, 190, 160 okay so now it's coming back down again and if anything you know it might be helping the air clear up a little bit faster because you can see we've shot straight past that 50 mark and we're back down into that 20s mark but I would expect it probably to be a while before it goes down to that 4 because I can smell that sort of smokiness in the air. So what is this telling me is that it doesn't help while you're soldering to have the fan because you're just going to be blowing particulate everywhere but it helps when you stop soldering that the particulate will restore a little bit faster. Now I don't know what's happened there because it's gone back up to 50. Maybe it's just pockets of the actual smoke particles going everywhere. We're still hanging around the 50 but I guess if you have somewhere for it to go, because right now it's winter here, the windows are closed, uh, you know, the air that I'm blowing with this fan isn't really going anywhere, it's just moving around in this space, but it's dissipating it, okay? So that, that's a really interesting experiment. Um, I'm going to do a part two follow-up of this, and I'm going to get one of those uh, fume extractors, and we'll put that Wow, so I just went and stuck this into the brass sponge because I wasn't really thinking because I was cleaning the tip and just by doing that it actually kicked up more particulate and you saw that spike into the 300s, you know. Uh, so I'm going to take the power supply off this anyway and, and tin my iron because I want to do that uh, to protect the tip. But yeah, so I'm going to go and get uh, one of those fume extractors We'll repeat this exercise with the fume extractor and we'll see if that fume extractor is making any difference at all. Is it something that is actually worthwhile doing? Is it something worthwhile getting? So, uh, yeah, like I said, if you want to check out the actual listing for this particular sensor, it's pretty cheap, it's about 30 bucks. You can probably find it on AliExpress and Taobao and other vendors, but I'll have the Banggood link to it below so you can check it out and if you want to set it up in your own workspace and see what it's like take it to your office chuck in the car very small it works off a battery pack which is exactly what I was doing with it I just had a little um, power bank that I was powering it with and so on and so forth okay all right well thank you very much for checking out this video if you like this kind of stuff uh, you want to see more of this kind of stuff then please hit that like button hit that subscribe button and of course share it to all your friends who do soldering work, electronics work, keyboards and whatever so they know what they're dealing with in their environment and their setup in relation to soldering fumes. All right, well, I'll catch you in the next one. And of course, until next time, happy clacking.